What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're actually going to be talking about Scream 3 in this video here today. Just a quick video. Well, might be quick, might be not. But this is in relation to the character of Stu Mocker, somebody who I love as a character, somebody who I very much so enjoyed. I think Matthew Lillard did a tremendous job bringing that character to life in the original Scream. It was nice to hear his voice cameo in Scream 3. But, you know, the character is dead and we've gotten to a point where now a producer who was heavily involved in those first three movies, Richard Potter, or I think he might actually have been a head of story development at Dimension Films when it comes to that. He shared some interesting things about Screen 3 and the process of what went on with these movies or that movie specifically underneath a post on Facebook, which I can only imagine was in per, in reference to Stu Mocker. The post had to be referencing Stu Mocker or something with Screen 3 for him to bring this up. So Richard Potter and his interesting comments. And if you don't believe me in anything I have to say about Richard Potter, Richard Potter, again, 100 percent worked on the screen movies and he's making claims now that completely make talking about Stu as being alive useless to me. He said that he was in charge of developing the first three Scream movies for Dimension Films. He still has Kevin's original draft of Scream 3 before Aaron Kruger came in to write his own idea for Scream 3. Stu is not in Kevin's script. When Kevin, Julie Pleck, and I sat down to discuss what Scream 3 would be about, there was never a discussion of Stu being in it. The big question was whether or not the Scream 3 should move the focus more to Gail from Sydney. These conversations all took place while we were in Atlanta shooting Scream 2, just as we discussed what Scream 2 would be about while while we're in Santa Rosa shooting Scream. Kevin may have thought about some idea of a cult or something with Stu later, but he never but he never discussed it with us and didn't write it in his first draft. I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have about the first movies. If there is something you'd like to know, feel free to ask, but I don't want to argue about Stu or who said what about Stu into intervening years. I can say with 100% certainty that we never discussed Stu being in Scream 3 when we were developing it. Now, Here's the thing. A lot of people are like, hey, well, what about Matthew Lillard and that clip, that audio clip of him saying that he had been paid to appear and return as Stu and Stu was going to be the killer. He's going to be pulling strings from behind prison. Matthew Lillard is the only one who I've seen make mention of that. I'm just being honest. Now, you might be saying, why would Matthew Lillard lie? Here's my thing. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Perhaps he wasn't trying to lie and perhaps what he did was just embellish some truths. Well, <laughs> I, I, I take that back. That literally that literally would be lying. Maybe what happened was some there's got to be something missing in terms of what was communicated between Matthew Lillard and Dimension Films, because I don't want to believe that Matthew Lillard intentionally just lied about his involvement with Scream 3. I know he definitely, again, was part of Scream 3. All of us know this. He had a voice cameo in Scream 3 when Sydney was on set of Stab 3. That We got to hear his voice. So he got paid for something, but he's alleged that it was, of course, to be the killer and he was going to be pulling the strings and Stu was running a cult, yada, 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 all that type of stuff. But according to this person, Richard Potter, who is much more trustworthy in terms of the creative process of these screen movies. He's actually done a few interviews, if not a couple interviews with Screen Trilogy, a major fan site dedicated to the screen movie. Shout out to you. You know who you are. And he's saying that Stu was never part of this process. Stu was never going to be a part of Scream 3. So with that in mind, I think it would be safe to assume that for the time being, Stu Mocker at that point in time was always intended to just be dead. He wasn't going to come back. Now, of course, we're in a different time period now. You don't have to abide by what was the plan. Then you could always say, hey, yes, Stu is alive and just cave and give in to all these crazy fan theories out there. I myself have said I would not have a problem with Stu being alive if you can find a logical way to make it make sense. But given how so much time has passed and, you know, people are already like, well, how didn't you, I mean, you have people already pointing out how didn't how didn't Gail Weathers know about Richie's family in Scream 6? I mean, you want to add more more problems to that already highly implausible scenario that people people have an issue with with Scream 6 by then tossing in that she didn't even know that Stu Mocker was alive in Scream 7? I mean, come on now. I, I just don't, I don't see it happening anymore. I really truthfully don't see this happening anymore. I don't think 
that Stu Mocker will ever be revealed as alive. I don't see the point in revealing him as alive, besides that just being a desire for most people. Not most, but some. And you have, you're, you're not wrong to desire that. I want to make that clear. You're not wrong to desire that. But I would say you are wrong for trying to deny what a producer is saying or trying to deny what a person who worked on these films very closely compared to Matthew Little is saying. And then saying, hey, well, Matthew Little is more reliable. I mean... You can think what you want. I think that the person who directly was in contact with Kevin Williamson over Scream 3 is more reliable than Matthew Lillard. I don't even see the point in Stu being alive anymore only because of the fact that you have Leslie Mocker sitting right there and there's a lot of material to work with right there with Leslie Mocker. You can still have Stu in Scream 7. I just don't see Stu Mocker being revealed as alive. You've already brought back Billy Loomis. He's still dead. You can bring back Stu Mocker and keep him dead. But I think there's a desire and an urge to not see it happen now from some people unless he's alive and it's not necessary to make that character alive you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification that you never miss a video in the description i'll have links to my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future in the description i'll actually leave a link to the reddit post that highlighted this facebook comment from richard and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video